is now from Kabul, is Zadash Shams. He served as the culture and press counselor at Afghanistan's embassy in Pakistan. With us here in Washington is the vice president for South and Central Asia at the United States Institute of Peace, Andrew Wilder. From London, we're joined by Michael Keating. He's a senior consulting fellow with Chatham House, a leading British think tank. And also with us in Washington is the former Afghanistan ambassador to Canada and France, Omar Samad. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Well, as we just heard, President Ashraf Ghani, uh, Ambassador, wants a rethink on the troop withdrawal timetable. What exactly does he want re-examined, as he puts it? I think that there's a realization in Kabul that you have to be realistic about how the security situation is evolving. And that means that you have to look at realities on the ground and how the commitment made by NATO is going to help us over the next two to three years deal with the challenges. The challenge being, on one hand, you know, the insurgency as we have known it over the years, represented by the Taliban and some other smaller factions. And now, maybe to some extent, a presence of some sort of Islamic State in Afghanistan. We have now reports showing that some cells, some groups, in southern Afghanistan are paying allegiance to Islamic State. And I think that the Afghan government obviously feels very responsible for this and wants to make sure that um, as we progress with reform and governance in other, other areas, that we do not face a bigger challenge, that we can uh, control the security problems that Afghanistan faces, therefore meaning that there might be a need for a more durable, prob probably a prolonged uh, commitment by the international community to Afghanistan. Uh, we don't know exactly what shape it's going to take, for how long it's going to be, but I think that the debate, the discussion should be open. Andrew Walder, um, it seems that the security situation in Afghanistan is very fluid. It changes all the time. But the fact that the president is now asking for a rethink on troop withdrawal, what does that tell us about uh, Afghanistan's readiness to take over its own security? Well, I think it's not just the president asking for a rethink. Uh, most Afghans I know are asking for a rethink, and most of the international experts who focus on Afghanistan, I think, are asking for a rethink. Because I think no one questions that we don't want 100,000 US troops in Afghanistan for the long term. But to go from 100,000 down to zero too quickly will be very destabilizing. In Afghanistan, the reality is it's still very heavily on international support, both for its security forces, but also economically. And we can't go from possibly one extreme of trying to do too much to the other extreme of trying to do too little too quickly, because that will be very destabilizing. And we've already seen a sharp deterioration in the security situation this year. Afghan national security forces have suffered casualties at unprecedented levels this year. And there is this need for the international community, not just the U.S., but I think led by the U.S., to give a long-term commitment to remaining engaged, both for the security benefits of that, but I think also the political benefits of that. Because I think if people feel like the international community is once again abandoning Afghanistan, I think that will have its own destabilizing effect. So this is where I certainly feel that the U.S. needs to remain engaged at lower levels than before, but not draw down too precipitously and too quickly, because um, that will be very destabilizing. Zada Shams in Kabul, uh, you're on the ground there, you're in Afghanistan. What is the security situation like? Does the central government in Kabul have control over the entire country? Because we're hearing that there's still fighting going on in the south, in Helmand province, and we, as we've just heard from the ambassador, there are now Afghan fighters who are pledging allegiance to ISIL, Islamic State. Yeah, the uh, security is uh, still a bigger, uh, bigger challenge for the Afghan government and for the Afghan people. Uh, though the ISIS, uh, uh, as Ambassador told, that uh, uh, there are reports that in the, especially in the southern pro provinces, uh, there is presence of ISIS. Uh, but that seems to be self-proclaimed uh, uh, allegiance, like uh, uh, there's no authentic uh, sources uh, to confirm this. But anyway, uh, after the conclusion of the U.S. and NATO mission uh, by end of uh, 2014, though the U.S. was able to defeat al-Qaeda, dismantle al-Qaeda, and uh, kill the number one OBL, uh, but for Afghanistan still it's a bigger challenge. Uh, security is also a bigger challenge. The Taliban presence uh, has increased, unfortunately. 
and they have lived uh, in the recent past in Konar and Helmand and uh, some other provinces, some massive attacks, ground attacks, uh, compared to their ambushes and IEDs and landmine attacks. So now they are uh, trying to hold ground uh, and control the territory. So uh, still the situation is uh, volatile. Michael Keating, we've heard President Ashraf Ghani say that he's unhappy with the idea of imposing deadlines for troop withdrawals. How flexible is NATO on the idea of extending the deadline and leaving more troops in Afghanistan? I mean, Ashraf Ghani w was the lead figure in the uh, transition uh, period, and uh, he is aware more than anyone else of uh, timeline-based transition rather than conditions-based uh, transition. Uh, I think NATO recognizes that its own reputation is tied up uh, with what happens uh, in Afghanistan. And let me add to what uh, uh, previous speakers have said. The value of continued uh, ISAF-NATO presence is not only the practical value of supporting the security forces, but he knows that the presence of uh, foreign troops is likely to increase the willingness of Western politicians to uh, maintain financial support for the country. Don't forget that the Afghan army is uh, huge. It's 350,000 people. Afghanistan spends more on its security as a percentage of its national budget than any other country in the world. And the bulk of the $5.5 billion defense budget is paid for by the Americans. I think there's another dimension here, which is that the other countries, uh, possibly including the Chinese and so on, uh, are also keen to see a continued international security presence. In fact, uh, in light of what's happened in Syria and Iraq and what's going on in other places in the world, uh, I think a number of lessons are, are being drawn by Ashraf Ghani and by others, uh, which, uh, all of which uh, combine to reinforce the logic of reviewing the pace at which uh, uh, foreign troops are withdrawn, uh, both uh, on security grounds uh, and in order to maintain uh, the state, because if the money collapses uh, and everyone disappears, if the country is abandoned, we will see uh, a descent into uh, chaos and enormous strains being placed upon the country. Ambassador, what kind of uh, security commitment would Afghanistan be looking for? Would it be something that's open-ended, or would we uh, be looking at something that is more like setting bench security benchmarks, which would have to be fulfilled, and in that way troops would... Yeah, I don't think anybody is looking for an open-ended uh, solution to this. I think uh, the best options uh, are uh, to reevaluate the situation uh, over time. Uh, as I said, and make it uh, condition it on the conditions on the ground. Uh, I think that Afghanistan uh, and its uh, security forces continue to need uh, special attention in terms of uh, training, uh, logistics, especially uh, air power, but limited air power in order for us to be able to uh, do what is necessary in counterinsurgency uh, activities. Uh, and I think the training and the mentoring that has been provided so far has been very valuable. And so whatever is needed uh, beyond, let's say, the next two years has to be looked into next year. And, and so I think what President Ghani and the new government are trying to do is to, to open this discussion and leave the door open for a discussion that will be ongoing uh, and, and look at what precisely is needed at, at that moment in time, uh, which will be probably uh, sometime uh, late next year in 2016. Andrew Wilder, 13 years of war in Afghanistan, are you surprised that there's still a big question mark over security in the country? I mean, what just stops the Taliban from sitting this out? Well, I think that's precisely why I don't think the international community should pull out too quickly, because I think that is the incentive for the Taliban, that if there's a perception that the uh, foreign troops are all leaving uh, by the end of 2016, why not sit it out? Um, you know, right now security has deteriorated. Um, the, you know, the government struggled to get its own cabinet you know, announced, uh, so there's been a political deadlock, the economy is deteriorating, so Afghans are losing some confidence. Uh, I think that can be rebuilt, but I think if that, if the international community at the same time is insisting on pulling troops out and reducing assistance, I think that will go along with that. I think that will be destabilizing. And then if you are the Taliban, why negotiate when you think that uh, your, your position is going to be much stronger a year and a half from now? 
Um, so th that's again, I think, I, I see the security situation deteriorating further um, if we don't maintain the international support at robust levels uh, moving forward to, in a way, I think provide an incentive for the Taliban to come to the table and negotiate and recognize that there isn't a military solution to this conflict. Zala Shams in Kabul, where does most of the opposition come from in Afghanistan to the government? Is it regional and are there still a number of foreign fighters in the country or is this mainly homegrown opposition that we're seeing? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, we can say it's regional, and now the, the, the reports are about the foreign uh, fighters, uh, but still, for Afghanistan, these are foreigners. Uh, the Taliban, uh, uh, they, they have foreigners in their lines, and uh, for example, the Chechens, the Uzbeks, Pakistani Taliban, and the Afghan Taliban. So uh, it, it's a regional plus international uh, issue for Afghanistan. And uh, the thing is, now the uh, support uh, uh, is it's, uh, decreasing uh, for the Taliban after the withdrawal uh, of uh, most of the U.S. and NATO forces. They are now looking for the motivation. And ISIS might be able to provide the motivation uh, uh, to further fight and uh, extend and prolong their fighting and their resistance uh, against the Afghan uh, as well as the international forces. Okay, I want to get the views of Michael Keating, but first we're going to have to take a break. More on Afghanistan's future when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.